Hello and welcome back to the latest devlog. Penumbra Tower is a grid-based roguelike where the player will have to navigate through the floors of the tower, defeating enemies and traveling farther within. Okay, first things first. So I got this snake guy. I don't have a clever name this time like I did for the pikeman, so if anyone has a clever name for this enemy, leave it in the comments and maybe I'll use it. For now, I'm calling it the Snake Skirmisher. And as always, while making this enemy, I went into a trance and when I woke up, I realized I never started my OBS, so no footage again, sadly. <clears throat> so I'll just quickly run through what I did to make the sprite instead. I started with a sketch just to get the basic shape of the enemy out of the way. I know it looks a little goofy here, but that's because we don't want the final version to look goofy. I knew ahead of time that I wanted the skirmisher to have this fencer position where one hand is behind its back and the other is holding the sword out in front. I also saw this cool design on Instagram and took some inspiration from it for the armor. From there I went over it again, this time with the proper brush, and filled in all the colors as well, ensuring that each body part is grouped into its separate layer. The skirmisher unit has a relatively unique attack pattern that follows a curving swirl shape. Ooh, and what's that? Is that a cheeky little impact animation? There was a sale on the Unity store about a week or two ago, so I bought a cartoon effects pack since it was 50% off. I figured I could either waste a whole bunch of time learning the particles effects system and create something that's passable, or I could just buy a pack of effects that look great and add them to the game in 5 minutes. So now, for every hit effect that I have in the future, I'll be able to add a particle effect and have it ready to go. I also may have bought the all-in-one shader pack as well, I haven't really used it for anything yet, but if you'll take a look at the water tiles here, they now have a subtle water texture that I drew in Krita and animated using the shader pack, just for a little extra spice. In the previous devlog, I talked about creating the tile set sprites, which included the door sprite. Back then, the door sprite didn't actually do anything. It was just a wall tile that had a different sprite attached to it. But now, it actually does something. Can the player go through the door to the next floor of the tower? No. But it does have a cool floating lock in front of it now. I wrote a couple lines of code that pretty much just checks if there are enemies alive in the room, and if there are enemies alive, the door remains locked. If there, everything is dead, the door unlocks. But because I haven't set up a system to spawn the new floor yet, the player can walk on top of the tile when it's unlocked, but not do anything. As you may have noticed, I did the smallest amount of work on the UI this week. I realized there were a ton of issues with how I was displaying the UI before, mainly when two units were beside each other, the UI would overlap. So I changed the overhead UI to appear on hover, and for the player specifically, I moved all the UI information onto the left side of the screen. Uh, it's important to note that this is all still placeholder, nothing is final, and I'm happy with none of it currently. But also, I'm not too worried about it right now. Maybe I'll move the enemy information to the right side, maybe I'll change all the icons, maybe I'll redo everything, who knows. Speaking of UI, I started working on the player power system. Item system? What do you even call this? I guess item system. Anyways, essentially the current plan is between each floor, the player will be offered one of three items which will randomly be pulled from an item pool. The player can select one item that will affect their stats for the rest of the run. Now, the best way I could find to implement this was to use an abstract class. Abstract classes are one of those things that I don't really know that well, and because I don't know it that well, I don't like it. But I got it working, so everything's all good. My brain did malfunction a little bit while making this. A couple of seconds ago, I said the player will have to choose one of three items in between floors, but if you'll remember back earlier in the video, I mentioned I haven't started working on the transitioning between the floors yet. So because of that, I can't spawn in the items right now, which is an oversight on my part. But that's alright, I've got a little bit of a workaround here. If you'll look at the player UI, I've split the items into two blocks. The items equipped, which is currently empty, this is where items that the player has selected will go, similar to the way that the Binding of Isaac shows items on the right side of the screen. 
And then as a temporary placeholder, I've added this items to click section here that will act as a pseudo item selector until we have the proper one in place. As you can see, I have two item effects working, one that gives a flat stacking bonus damage. As you can see in the clip, I was doing one damage to the enemies before, but when I clicked on the item and added it to the equipped items section, it jumped to three damage. And I have another item here that offers healing over time. Well, not really healing over time, more like a small healing bonus at the start of the player's turn. It's kind of hard to see here because I haven't added a UI number for healing yet, but you can see the health increasing on the left side. And on a completely different topic, I've replaced the legacy rat enemy with a new sprite, because I didn't like how the old rat was front facing while every other unit was facing off to the side. This enemy is now a rat rogue, or something like that. Uh, comment down below. And yes, I did forget to record this one as well. Future plans for this include mainly working on generating the next floor for when the player finishes the current one. I'm probably also going to move the particles into a particle manager, that way everything is in one place. And I want to do the same thing for audio clips as well, even though there aren't really any right now. Uh, I was testing an impact sound in some of the clips that I used in this video. I thought it sounded alright, but I think the game desperately needs some more sounds for just uh, background music, combat, moving, item pickup, the door unlock, there's just a ton of stuff. Um, but I'll, I'll worry about that later. <laughs> and just as a final bit here at the end for those who made it all the way through the video thanks for watching the whole video by the way <laughs> i'm thinking about changing the name penumbra tower to something else i do like the name i just think it's a little vague and as far as steam games go it could be simpler if you know what i mean i really want to get the name nailed down that way i can create a steam page because once i get the system working for generating additional floors i think the gameplay loop will be very close for me to release a demo so yeah that's the current plan i don't know the name could be i I'm, i just threw some of these into or not so i I threw the prompt into ChatGPT and got some names like Crokey Combat, Croak and Dagger, Froggy's Tower, Tadpole Tower, Toadstool Tower, something maybe like that, not 100% sure at this point. I could possibly move away from the tower idea completely, just as a thought. Uh, I, I'm thinking some of these rooms could be so drastically different where th this one that we're currently working on is a dungeon room, right? But the next room could be some sort of forest or, or swamp, right? It doesn't really make sense if it's a tower. I mean, it could be a magical tower, you know what I mean? But yeah, I'm just, just leaving off the video with that thought. Um, thanks for watching.